Now, in this blessed month of Ramadan, there are three stops or there are three stations that you don't ever want to miss. And subhanAllah, this is the mercy of this blessed month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us these three stops or stations for this blessed month. The first station, the first stop comes where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدْمَ مَنْ زَمِنْ Whosoever does qiyam, i.e. taraweeh, in the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall forgive all of his previous sins. The second station is مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ زَمْنِ Whosoever fasts in the month of Ramadan with iman and hoping the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ زَمْنِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of his previous sins. And the third stop or station comes which is مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whosoever does qiyam or tahajjud and taraweeh on the night of Laylatul Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall forgive all of his previous sins. Now subhanallah, this is an amazing opportunity for all those that have committed tons of sins in the accord of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us have committed sins, small sins, major sins, all the different variety of sins. But let us use this blessed month of Ramadan that where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives us three opportunities for us to rectify ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. This is an amazing opportunity for those who have been thinking of coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is this reluctancy between them, you know, being ashamed of their sins. Here is an opportunity for you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith Thalathatun la turaddu da'watum Three kinds of people when they make dua to Allah Their dua is surely not rejected Number one As-sa'imu hatta yuftar The one who makes dua when they're about to break their fast Number two Awal imamul adil And the just ruler making dua And number three Wa da'watul mazlum And the dua of a person who has been oppressed And he, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And don't forget say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said and I love this hadith the Prophet is stressing he says basically the one who has been fasting and breaks their fast that time when they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will surely accept it and not reject it what a golden opportunity that we don't want to miss Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brothers and sisters appreciates it at the pinnacle and the climax of your hunger of your weakness of your tiredness and the food is being presented here and there and you actually remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you make dua to him during that time right around adhan maghrib adhan you're about to make your fast and you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah appreciates that and Allah tells you you make dua at that time I will accept it and I will not reject it Allahu Akbar some people may ask brother what time exactly shall I make dua to get this like golden opportunity the ulama many of them have said there's room for it so some have said you can make dua a few minutes before the adhan of maghrib comes in and some say you can make that dua after adhan and after your iftar you break your fast then you can make your dua and may Allah accept it whatever time suits you best brothers and sisters from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to make a specific dua during that time when he was about to break his fast he used to say the the thirst is gone and the veins are moist وَثَبَتَ الْأَجْرُ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ And the reward is guaranteed by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, be optimistic like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow the sunnah and make that dua and add whatever you wish. So don't be so distracted before Adhan time with all the food. Rather, seize the moment and make dua during that precious time. What is the first thing Allah wanted us to know about Ramadan? Shahru Ramadan, alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. The first thing He told us about the ayah, the month of Ramadan is the one in which the Qur'an was sent down. There's no mention of what yet, Master. 
There's no mention of fast. The only thing, this is a month, the Quran came down in it. So now the Muslim knows the thing that makes us different, that Quran, that incredible gift of Allah that was revealed in this month, this month is better than every other month, automatically. This book is better than all previous revelation. It's the ultimate revelation, the final revelation of Allah Azza wa Jal. This month must be the best month of all. The Muslim hasn't even heard about the fasting yet, but he knows this is the best month. Now maybe the next words are going to tell us about fasting. Shahru Ramadan, alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran, hudan linnas. Quran is a guidance for people. The conversation is no longer about Ramadan, the conversation is about the Quran. The Quran is so important in this ayah that the subject of the, the month of Ramadan is stopped. And the conversation began about the Quran itself. You should get reintroduced to the Quran. And let me tell you what Allah says about the Quran in this ayah. Number one, He says, Hudan lin nas. It's a guidance for people. Do Muslims already know that? Yes. وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَىٰ It has multiple proofs and multiple clear teachings that come from guidance. Do Muslims already know that? وَالْفُرْقَانِ And it makes a dis distinction between right and wrong. It, it, it dictates a criteria, a standard between right and wrong. Do Muslims already know that? Yes. Everything Allah said about the Qur'an in this ayah is something the Muslims already knew or didn't know. They already knew. What is Allah telling us? When this month comes, it's almost as though you are getting reintroduced to the Qur'an. It's like you're coming to the Qur'an for the first time all over again. Every time. You should feel like you just became a new Muslim ummah. Every Muslim should feel like he just became a Muslim. You know when somebody just becomes a Muslim, they really want to read the Qur'an. I just want to read, what does it say? What does God say to me? There's a curiosity, right? Allah wants us to have that fresh take on the Qur'an every single month. Every single month of Ramadan. Not for just the fasting. Not just to get the foods. Most of us end up gaining weight in Ramadan, not losing weight. I will recite the Qur'an like I've never recited it before. I will read the same ayat like I've never read them before. This is the beauty of these ayat. The Jews believed that their book was guidance for all of mankind? No. They believed that their Torah was guidance only for them. Allah says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan linnas. Not this time. You new nation, you don't get to keep it for yourself. This will be a guidance for everyone. So you know what those words mean? Allah didn't just say hudan lakum. This guidance is for you people. He said, Hudan lin nas. You know what that means? This month I will learn the Quran. I will reintroduce myself to it. But I know for a fact, this book will not walk itself over to the people. Who will have to give it to the people? You and I will. Because it is guidance not just for you and me, it is guidance for the people. The month of Ramadan is a reminder that we have to share Quran with humanity. Just in the words, Hudan lin nas. When you share the Quran with humanity, they ask for proof. They ask, why do you believe this is the word of God? What's your proof? What's your evidence? Give me something. Don't they say that? Allah says in the next words, very logical. وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَىٰ Bayinat means proofs, clear evidences that come from guidance. Not only does it guide people, it proves to them that this is the guidance too. You don't have to come up with some outside evidence, the evidence is inside the Qur'an. Anybody with decency, human decency is going to see that. They're going to come to this book with the right intention, and they will find guidance and the proofs that this is guidance. It will validate that for them. And once they accept those proofs, it will tell them which way is wrong and which way is right. It will separate right and wrong for them. So it started with a guide, an invitation for people, a guidance for people. It will prove itself to them. And once it proves itself to them, they will pick the right way from the wrong way because it will draw a line for them. Don't do this and do this. Live this way and don't live this way. Subhanallah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did say رَغِمَ أَنفُهُ رَغِمَ أَنفُهُ رَغِمَ أَنفُهُ May his nose be rubbed in dust three times and the Sahaba said who ya Rasulullah? He said مَنْ بَلَغَ رَمَضَانْ وَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهُ Whoever reaches Ramadan and they haven't been forgiven So there is no greater opportunity than the time of Ramadan for our forgiveness O oh, you who has regretted their sins O oh, you who knows of secret sins that no one else knows about and you, and you cry in the night and you feel so guilty about it and you've given up almost hope. This is your time, insha'Allah ta'ala, to get rid of this burden off your shoulders and for it to replace in your heart a sweetness, sweetness, sweetness of happiness, of iman that you have never felt before. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the shaitan comes directly from the front, directly from the back through his allies and he, through his deception and from the front through his allies and leaving a seed in your desires before Ramadan and from the sides, the shaitan finds it difficult, the, sh the angels are there. And here is where the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his love for you is really shown. That above you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whose mercy descends upon you. And when you lift your arms up to Allah in dua, 
Allah does not allow any evil, any obstacle, any distraction between you calling upon your dear Lord and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responding to His beloved servant. It's a direct, direct connection. And Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ And if my servants ask you about me, O Messenger of God, tell them, Messenger of Allah, Tell them, I am close, I am very close. You know, like what a mother says to a child when a child wakes up in the night and the child's very scared, seen a nightmare. Mom, Dad, and they come close to them and they say, don't worry, I'm here, I'm close, I'm with you. You go to school and they say, don't worry, I'm with you. Just remember your mom, remember your dad. You know, I'm with you. When a dear friend tells you wherever you go, just hold this, remember, I'm with you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you like the nurturing mother saying to its child, I am with you. فَإِنِّي قَرِيب, I am close. I will respond to the person who calls upon me when they call. So let them respond to my call. Let them respond to me. Because the way that I command you, Allah is saying, is the way to me. Is the way to me. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us something or prohibits us something, He is actually drawing the line or the road for you in how to get close to Him. How to feel His presence, subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the point where, to the point where you continue to do the compulsory actions until you do the voluntary actions after that, until Allah says, I become your eye which you see with, your hearing which you hear with, your leg which you walk with, your hand which you touch with. And if you were to ask me for anything, I will give you. And if you seek refuge in me from anything, I will give you protection. And one of the questions, one of the most oft questions I get from young people is, you know what, my Iman is just not doing too well. Like, I have a dip in my Iman, and I just don't feel it anymore. Or a lot of times, people who start practicing Islam, they'll have this Iman high, and they're doing really, really well, and then a time will come where, where they'll be like, you know, it just doesn't feel the same anymore. Or a lot of times, reverts and converts will say, when I first became Muslim, it was the most amazing experience of my life, and I want that back. I want that experience back. And one of the first questions I ask these people is, how is your connection with Allah? How is your Qiyam al-Layl? When was the last time you got up in the middle of the night or in the last third of the night to pray to your Lord? And if the answer, answer usually is, well, I don't, I don't really do that. I mean, I just try to do my five daily prayers. I'm just happy if I can get that in. And I tell them, I say, listen, if you're cutting off your connection with Allah, how are you going to get better? You can't expect your Iman to just get fixed all of a sudden on its own. It's not going to happen. You have to take steps for you to become a better Muslim. You have to take steps to reach that level of Iman.